And it's crooked. It's not crooked. Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Smaller than a Raspberry Pi 4, it's a Raspberry Pi 02W, but this one is inside of a fancy case, and there's a reason for it. Let's go take a look at how, how this case works, because I think it's gonna do the trick. I see a Pi, it must be Pi time. This is the Geekworm model M200K, and it is a Raspberry Pi 0 case, so it's it's extra small, even though it's it's pretty big, it's still smaller than your typical Raspberry Pi 4 case. And we got a very special project in mind for this. So let's get this thing together. What I need is real USB ports, and that's what this does. It takes my essentially single USB port, because one of these is for power, one of these is for USB, and turns it into three USB ports. Installation guide, I don't think we'll need that. Gigabit Ethernet expansion board, Raspberry Pi 0, 2W, 0 or 0W, and they don't occupy any GPIO pins, which is important. Three USB A 2.0 ports, type C power port, which is good, because it's one less cross connect mess that I need to make. Kyrie's toolkit, the number two Phillips head screwdriver. Let's get this case open. We have that. Oh, it's purple. There's the board that we put the Raspberry Pi on. That slides right out. I don't think I'm going to need to take the other side off. So we will put the toolkit off to the side. Heat sink. That's nice. Some heat sink pads. Also nice. We have a piece of copper. And we have some heat sink tape. And some more heat sink tape. It looks like it's almost on sideways. Power up the MCU. Okay. Zero giga... X1 Rev 1.3. Okay, it appears that this copper plate probably isn't necessary, but we will find out as we dig deeper on. They want you to take these two heat sink pads here and put one on this chip and one on that chip. I've already got one on that chip. We'll see if these are the same thickness. The chip stands a little taller, so we'll use the thinner one. That looks good. You will not get the better of me. Seems like a piece of cheese. I like cheese. There's a little cutout here for the mini HDMI port. And then we'll double check. That looks good. Nice. And then there's some test pads there that line up with the pins, so you don't need to use a port or anything. Some pogo pins. And we have some longer screws here. We're just going to use all the Phillips heads. This is a number zero Phillips head. And then we slide this thing right back in. Room for some ventilation on both sides or a ribbon cable coming out from your GPIO headers. Three USB ports, gigabit ethernet. This connection here is used internally, so there's no, no connection there. It actually says NC for no connect. This is a power connection or another USB-C power connection. And then mini HDMI. So let's give her a whirl. Let's bring some devices to it. This is my mini HDMI to regular HDMI converter, which is plugged into my HDMI capture. We'll plug that in. This is my USB-C power device, which is plugged into my USB-C power device delivery thingy. And I can see a little green light in there and we've got the rainbow on the screen. So it works. Okay, we've got our login. This is my USB keyboard adapter. I'm gonna plug this into the first port. There's my keyboard. That works. Of course, I can't log in as root because I don't know root's password. Okay, so there's D message W. Unplug that and we get a USB disconnect like we should. I'm gonna try and plug this device into the power port does it work? It does not work. I didn't expect it to work because it doesn't say it's supposed to. I'm gonna plug this into the NC. The NC didn't work. So let's plug it back into port one. Okay, that works. Port two. That works. Port three, and that works. Just for grins, I'm gonna take my regular power cable, which is micro USB, and try that instead of the USB-C 
And the light is on and the rainbow is on the screen. Okay, this is now plugged into the NC port, the no connect port on the back. Interesting. Some very interesting behavior. This port that's labeled NC will power the device, but when you are plugged in there, it disables these three USB ports at the least. It might disable some other things, but definitely disables those ports. So power goes into the one marked power or the one marked power, and the one marked NC is no connect. Okay, Tio, why do you want the fancy case? Why all the fanciness for your Raspberry Pi Zero? It's a good enough computer just as it is, right? Wrong, we're gonna make it better. I need some USB ports for some USB dongles. These guys look familiar, don't they? This is the ADSB Exchange uh, ADSB Flight Tracker, and then this is the ADSB Exchange ACARS Downloader. I'm gonna run both of these off of this box, and I need to have ports in order to do that. So, and it always goes in the way you don't expect it to. That one will go in like that, and that one will go in like that, and it's almost as if this case was made for these things. But wait, there's more. <sighs> All right, the cat's out of the bag now. We have two SDR dongles plugged into the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W, and the plan gets better. We've got one of these knockoff Pelican cases. This is made by Magia, and it's actually a pretty decent price, and it's really actually good quality. It's nice, thick plastic, and it's got the pluck and foam stuff, pluck and pull foam stuff inside, and the, you know, Whatever, it, it does the case thing. We'll have some more videos on this coming out because what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a waterproof, outdoor, self-contained, Raspberry Pi-based, ADSB flight tracker, web server, walk-up kiosk type deal where you can walk up with your cell phone and see what planes are overhead because I'm going traveling and I wanna know what planes are overhead where I happen to be. So this is actually gonna be very important. I wanted it bright orange so that people would go, oh, what's that about? And I also wanted one of these kind of cases because it's gonna be outside in the rain. Some awesome times coming up ahead. Be sure you're subscribed to follow the journey as we go down the path of getting the ADSB exchange software set up and solving all the problems that we need to solve. There's a video right here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.